Hi. First, a couple of notes before we get started, this being the first video. Um, these videos are not meant to be a replacement for um, reading the textbook, and it is recommended that you have the textbook in front of you and then follow through with the textbook as you watch the video so that it's a supplement to it. The other thing, too, is these videos are meant to be watched with a computer in front of you. So I'm going to be assuming that you have a computer in front of you with Alice either 2.0 or 2.2 installed on your computer and ready to go. And if you haven't got that done yet, you need to actually stop this video and do that first. So our first step is to actually find the Alice icon on our desktop or if you have it somewhere else, you can start it somewhere else and start that up. And you might get this warning, don't worry about it. A couple of things as this is booting up. One, you might be noticing that I'm running Windows XP. Uh, you very likely might not be. You could be running Windows 7. You could be running on a Mac. Alice runs on all of those just fine. You could be running on some other operating system. So there will be some minor differences that are coming up. The other thing I want to point out is the version number here, the 2.2. I'm running, okay? If you installed your version of Alice from the textbook, you would be installing version 2.0, okay? And they're, they're pretty much the same. They're 99% the same. There are a few differences that come up. The textbook is designed for Alice 2.0, so that's the first thing I want to mention. So the screenshots that you, that you see in the textbook might not quite match what you see in this video. Um, but the two main things actually have to do with this first interface that comes up. So here's what comes up with Alice 2.2. When you open up Alice 2.0, I have a screenshot of that opening screen that you get here. And I'm going to put the two beside so that we can compare. Whoops. And the first thing to notice is that the 2.0 version, which we have here on the right, has a textbook tab. And that textbook tab is missing from the 2.2 version, okay? And the examples that I have are that we're going to get in this video are right in the textbook tab. They're actually right here and here, these two right here, what we're going to be using over the next couple of videos, okay? If It's not a big deal if you have 2.2. What it means that you have to uh, save and download the two files from the course database and uh, look at them that way, okay? The other difference is, here's a second screenshot of the 2.0 screen that comes up, is if I click Open World, which I have open here, notice the difference in the views here. Okay, In the Alice 2.0 version, the big thing to notice is there isn't a My Documents thing. This is the 2.2 here on the left. It has a My Documents button on the side. This one does not have a My Documents button. And for a lot of people that aren't super comfortable with working with folders and knowing where things are on their computer, not having a My Documents button might be a little bit awkward. So, obviously that's why they put it into the 2.2 version. So there are the two main differences. Other than that, they run exactly the same. So, let's bring up this first, uh, let's follow through what's going on with the textbook. So the textbook says, that uh, we're going to start up Alex. We're gonna, Alice, we're going to get this screen, and we're going to start by clicking on Templates, and we're going to click on the Grass Template, and we're going to click Open. So this is what brings up kind of a blank world with nothing in it, and a lot of our programs are going to start with this. Okay, But instead, what we're going to do is we're going to use one of the ones that is provided to us by the people that write the textbook. So we're going to go to File, we're going to go to Open a World, Okay. Uh, unlike what the textbook says, I don't have a, a uh, textbook tab, so what I have to do is I've saved it into a folder called Alice in my My Documents folder, and I recommend all of you to create a folder specifically for Alice so that all your Alice stuff can go there. And I'm going to open a file called Appendix A First World. So I'm going to scroll along. I have a lot of stuff in my Alice folder, so I'll apologize for that. But there it is, Appendix A First World. Okay, and there it is. All right. And so let's take a look at the view here. Here is a, a view of the opening scene. Here is the actual program that is going to be run. Don't worry about that just yet. That's what we're going to be doing in this course. This is a list of the objects that are in the program. And... Uh, well, we'll get to the other stuff in a little bit. So for now, what we're going to do is we're just going to push the play and we're going to see what happens. Okay. And if you didn't like that, you can push restart and play it again. 
So it's, it's like a very short little play. Okay, you can pause the play. This one's very short, so you have to pause it. Oh, restart. You can pause at any particular moment. You can stop and go back to the. Oh, stop just closes it. Uh, you can take a screenshot, a picture of it, like that. I don't want to, but you can. Okay. There's also a speed dial if you have a program that's running uh, very slow that you can speed it up. Okay. Of course. Uh, okay. So let's close this animation window. And, the, and we'll open up now a second one. We're going to go File, Open. Again, I don't have the textbook tab, so I'm going to look for the file. It's called Appendix A Dancing B. That's this one right here. Okay. And now I'm going to push the play again. And the thing to notice now is nothing seems to happen. But watch what happens. I'm going, and you can't see me doing this, but I'm going to press the up arrow on my computer. And we got a little up thing happening. And now I'm going to press the space bar on my computer. Okay. All right. So this world uses the same initial scene as our previous one did. Okay. But the program has been changed to be interactive. It's what programmers call event driven. Pressing the up arrow creates an event and Alice responds to the up arrow event by making the hair jump. Pressing the space bar creates a different event and Alice responds to the spacebar event by making the bee perform a pirouette in flight. Okay. So this is a this world is an example of an interactive event-driven animation. So our animations are actually going to be in two different types. Some of them are going to play out like little plays where the user, the person who is running the program, uh, doesn't interact with it at all, other than perhaps pushing play or hitting pause or those kind of things. And then the other ones are going to be these event-driven programs.